solving the next C and D. So we'll start with C. I've got 4, 1 1.1, x raised to the negative 1. So first thing I'm going to get rid of is I'm going to isolate the, the term with the exponent in. So I'm going to isolate the 1.1 term. So I get rid of the 4 by dividing out by the 4, right? Opposite, I have to multiply by 4, divide by it to get rid of it. And so on this side, I'm left with 1.1 raised to the x minus 1 equals 4. Now, I don't want to use a log base 1.1. You can. But I want to always stick with a log I can plug into my calculator. All right, so either use log base 10 or the natural log. And since in calculus we prefer the natural log, I'm going to always use the natural log because it's what I do when I teach calculus. And so if you want, but you can do the same thing with log base 10. If you do the log base 10, you should get the same answer. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the natural log of both sides. So I'm going to take the natural log of this side and the natural, and I can do that. That's the uniqueness property. So here I have the natural log of 1.1 raised to the x minus 1 equals the natural log of 4. Now I'm going to use one of my rules of logarithms. I can pull this power out front as a multiplication. And so I can rewrite this first term as x minus 1. And it's the whole thing comes out front, so I do need to put parentheses around it. Times the natural log of 1.1 equals the natural log of 4. And now natural log of 1.1 and natural log of 4 are just ugly numbers. All right? And so I treat them as if it were 2 and a 10. And so first thing I get rid of is the natural log of 1.1. Well, I get rid of multiplication by dividing. And so on this side, I'm left with the x minus 1. And I can drop parentheses now since there's nothing multiplying there because this reduces to 1. And on this side, I'm left with that. And you leave it leave it right now. Don't do the uh, calculator part until the very end of the problem because I want the exact answer. And so right now, I've got x minus 1 equals that ugly fraction. And you can't do anything with that. Natural log of 4 divided by natural log of 1.1 doesn't change. It's nothing to do with that. You have to leave it like that. And then the last thing is add 1 to the other side. So x is exactly the natural log of 4 divided by the natural log of 1.1 plus 1. And then you find the approximate answer to that by plugging that into the calculator. And I'm going to write it over here. All right, so that's exactly what it is. Then you carefully type out natural log of 4 divided by natural log of 1.1. And again, those are two separate terms you have to divide. And then don't forget the plus 1 at the end. So again, be careful with this in the calculator. Make sure you do the natural log of 4 divided by the natural log of 1.1 separate and then tack 1 on. All right, it comes out to 15.545 if I round three decimal places. All right, C was back over here or D was back over here. All right, so let's do D. This one's actually a little easier. The last example was a little harder. This one's a little easier. I don't have to manipulate anything. I've got e raised to the, now if you wanted to, you could take the natural log of both sides. But this is the uniqueness property, right? I've got e raised to the x plus 6 equals e raised to the x squared. Well, the uniqueness property tells me if I've got the same base raised to the same numbers, those numbers they're raised to have to be equal. And so I can simplify this by rewriting it as just the x plus 6 has to equal the x squared. x plus 6. And now it's just a quadratic case, which we know how to solve quadratics, set it equal to zero. I don't like negatives on my square term, so I'm going to move the x and the 6 to the other side. So zero equals x squared minus x minus 6. Then you can solve your quadratic however you want. This one's a simple case. It does factor nicely. It factors into x plus 2 minus 3, right? Negative 3 times 2 give me, gives me negative 6. Uh, 2 minus 3 gives me my negative 1, and so I get two answers, negative 2 and positive 3, and so that one has two solutions. If I plug negative 2 or positive 3 into that, I get the same answer, right, the same equality. So e raised to the negative 2 plus 6 is the same as e raised to the negative 2 squared, and that should make sense because negative 2 plus 6 is going to give me out 4, negative 2 squared is also 4, and then you can check the 3, 2. Uh, the 3 plus 6 gives me 9, and the 3 squared gives me 9, so they both do check. Right, I'm going to continue and do E and F, all right, and then I'll stop after E and F. And maybe 
Maybe I'll go ahead and finish it. <clears throat> All right, so 10, so this one's a, so it's 100 minus 5 times 10 to the x plus 7. So I've got to solve for the 10 to the x. I want to solve for the term with the x in it. So first thing I'm going to do is subtract the 100 from both sides. So I'm left with negative 5 times 10 to the x equals negative 93. Divide by my negative 5, divide by my negative 5. So I've got 10x, and that doesn't simplify. I'm going to leave it exactly 93 divided by 5, right? The ones are, sorry, the negatives do cancel each other out, but 93 over 5 doesn't simplify nicely. So I'm going to leave it exactly, right? We want exact answers. And now I do my, my logarithms, right? So I take the log base 10 of both sides. And so those reduce, leave me with x, leaves me with the log base 10 of 93 over 5. And so that's exactly what x equals. x equals log base 10 of 93 divided by 5. And then we plug that into the calculator and solve for the approximate. So when we solve for our log of 93 divided by 5, we get 1.2695. So if I round three decimal places... <clears throat> Excuse me. It rounds to, because the 5 rounds the 9 up, so it rounds to 1.270. Right, F. All right, so F is going to be, I'm going to solve F. There's actually a couple ways you can solve F. Right, you, however you want to look at it. You could get the same base if you wanted to. Right, so I actually might solve F a couple different ways. There's two ways you can actually solve it. You can use your, your logarithms and, and multiply both sides. Or you can use your, your bases. I know 4 can change into a base 2, right? If I rewrite 4 as 2 squared, and remember that's understood to be 2 to the first, I, I simplify my exponents, right? We multiply that out, so it's 2 raised to the 2x minus 2 equals 2 to the first. Then I can set my exponent equal to each other, right? 2x minus 2 equals, there's an understood 1 on that power, and then solve for x. x equals 3 halves. All right, that's one way to solve it. But not every student can see that method. This actually, for some reason, this students don't necessarily see that. So you could use the methods we have been doing. All right, so this is an alternative. If I didn't recognize, I could change the 4. And again, not everybody can recognize that. You can use your logarithm method. All right, I can take the natural log of both sides. So I'd get the natural log of 4x minus 1 equals the natural log of 2, move the x minus 1 out front, All right, so this is a lot like the example we did earlier, so divide out by that natural log of 4, divide out by that natural log of 4, so on this side I'm left with x minus 1, here I'm left with the natural log of 2 over the natural log of 4, add 1. And so x equals the natural log of 2 divided by the natural log of 4 plus 1. If you type that into the calculator, it gives you out 1 and a half. 1 and a half is 2 thirds. And so there were two ways you could solve this. You could use exponential properties to solve it. And if you recognize that, that's probably the easier way to go is the first way I did it. But again, for some reason, students have a hard time seeing this. And so you can always use logarithms to solve exponent. You get the same answer. One and a half is exactly the same as two thirds. All right, I'm going to go ahead and solve the last two. And then we'll do logarithms in the next video because these aren't too bad. <clears throat> 32, so again, same thing here. 32 raised to the 8. There's two ways you can do this. You could use your log. All right, so if I take the log of both sides, I get the natural log of 32x equals the natural log of 8 my x out front. I get the natural log of 32 equals the natural log of 8. Divide by the natural log of 32. And so x equals the natural log of 8. Divide by the natural log of 32. Which comes out 0.6. Right, if you take the natural log of 32 divided by the natural log of 8. Oh, I did it backwards. Natural log of 8 divided by the natural log of 32. There we go. Comes out 0 0.6. 
which again is three fifths. All right, there is an alternative to that. All right, so that's the logarithm method. The alternative is the exponential. So if I go back, it's kind of a lot like the last example. I can rewrite these as base twos. All right, eight is two cubed. Thirty-two is two to the fifth. All right, so I can multiply two to the five x is equal to two cubed. I've got the same base, so I use the uniqueness property five x equals three, divide by five, divide by five, x equals three fifths, which is point six. And so there's two ways to go. Now in this case, I think the first method was the easier, which is why I started with that method. I actually think this one's harder to do with exponentials than it is with logarithms. But both of those methods are perfectly fine for solving these exponential type functions. All right, same thing for h, same process. Again, it's up to you however you want to do it. You could do the natural log of both sides. And now this one gets a little messier because of um, there's a little more going on up here in my 3. All right, so again, this one might be easier to solve with the exponent, but again, there's two methods that I'm going to show you both. All right, so first, if we use the natural log, so I take the natural log of both sides. All right, natural log of that equals the natural log of 1 over 27. Pull that out, so I get 3 minus 2x equals the natural log of 3 equals the natural times the natural log of 3 equals the natural log of 1 over 27. And then divide by my natural log of 3. And so I get 3 minus 2x equals the natural log of 1 over 27. Divided by the natural log of 3. And I'm actually going to find that. Because if you recognize, natural log of 27 natural log of 3 are both base 3's. And so if I take the natural log of 1 divided by 27, divided by the natural log of 3, that actually simplifies nicely to negative 3. And it should. 3 to the negative third gives me 1 over 27. And so now it's easy to solve if I do that. So I subtract 3, so I get negative 2x equals negative 6. x equals 3 is the answer. All right, and that's using the logarithms, All right, which are a perfectly fine way to do that. An alternative to using logarithms, whenever it's the same base, I could have used exponential. So I'm going to come over here and show you the other method. So I've got 3 raised to the 3 minus 2x equals 1 over 27. I know 27 is a base 3, and I know I need a negative exponent. So if I rewrite this first as 27 to the negative first, that gets rid of the fraction. Then I know 27 is 3 cubed, and so I get 3 raised to the 3 minus 2x equals 3 raised to the negative 3, right? I multiply my negative 1 and my 3, and now I've got my uniqueness property. I know if I have the same base, my exponents have to be equal. That means my 3 minus 2x has to equal my negative 3. I'm at this step in the process, right? Those are exactly the same, and so when I solve that, it is going to come out x equals 3. And so this one, it's just up to you. Sometimes it's easier to use one method versus another. And again, sometimes it's just easier to always use the same method. So you pick the method you find the easiest to solve. Right? If it's easier for you to manipulate exponentially, manipulate exponentially. If it's easier for you to always use the logarithms, always use the logarithms. All right. Again, there's two ways to go with these. When they're the same base, right? when I know I can make them the same base. That's the key. All right, we'll stop there. We'll pick up logarithms in the next video.